Yee ha! After rereading the Ron Paul newsletters on the 5th of November, there was much bawling. The newsletters clearly show Ron Paul is either a man full of paranoid hysterical fears about black men who cozied up to racists for years, or a cynical politician who fleeced money from racists to build his political base for re-election. Ron Paul explains accepting donations from Stormfront founder Dunn Black. Plus, there are reports, sir, that um, your campaign has received a $500 campaign donation from a white supremacist in West Palm Beach. Um, and your campaign had indicated you have no intention to return it. Uh, what are you going to do with that? Hmm, I, it's probably already spent. Why well, give it back to him and use it for bad purposes? You know, and I, I don't even know his name. And <laughs> Ron Paul fans say Ron Paul had no idea who wrote the newsletters, or Lou Rockwell wrote them, or the mysterious random staffers did it, and offer this news clip as a rebuttal. But he couldn't answer a key question. How did this stuff get in these Ron Paul newsletters? Who wrote it? Well, well, I, I have no idea. Bullshit. The Ron Paul newsletters were published by Ron Paul and Associates, a hole in the wall company that, if the address is any indication, probably used the mailing address of his gynecology practice he returned to. Ron Paul and Associates was an incorporated business entity consisting of Ron Paul, Ron Paul's wife, Ron Paul's daughter and Lou Rockwell. Subscriptions were $50 a year and in 1992 brought in $940,000. That's almost 19,000 subscriptions. With an average income of $78,000 per month flying through the office it strains credibility that neither Ron, nor Carol, nor Lou knew what was in them or who edited them. Of course this is also bullshit as the masthead shows the editors. But the most damning admission Ron Paul wrote and edited the Ron Paul newsletters come from Paul himself, in an interview with the Dallas Morning News on May 22, 1996. Dr. Paul, who is running in Texas 14th Congressional District, defended his writings in an interview Tuesday. He said they were being taken out of context. Dr. Paul denied suggestions that he was a racist and said he was not evoking stereotypes when he wrote the columns. He said they should be read and quoted in their entirety to avoid misrepresentation. I end the interview. He did not deny he made the statement about the swiftness of black men. If you try to catch someone that has stolen a purse from you, there is no chance to catch them, Dr. Paul said. He also said the comment about black men in the nation's capital was made while writing about a 1992 study produced by the National Center on Incarceration and Alternatives a criminal justice think tank based in Virginia. Citing statistics from the study, Dr. Paul then concluded in his column, Given the inefficiencies of what D.C. laughingly calls the criminal justice system, I think we can safely assume that 95% of the black males in that city are semi-criminal or entirely criminal. These aren't my figures, Dr. Paul said Tuesday. That is the assumption you can gather from the report. At the same time a campaign spokesman confirmed Ron Paul was still writing the new letters for an undisclosed number of subscribers. Not Lou Rockwell, not mysterious staffers, but Ron Paul. Final word goes to a former Ron Paul supporter. I F Paul let this go on for 10 plus years and either didn't know about it or did not notice. Then he is just too plain stupid to be president. Checkmate.
Thank you for playing. Knowledge is free. We are anonymous. None of us are as cruel as all of us. Expect us.